If you're looking for Brisbane's most undervalued suburbs statistically, then this is the video for you. Now, I've gone absolutely nuts this year and looked at over 400 suburbs across 20 key performance indicators each, and these are some of the best and most undervalued suburbs between now and the 2032 Brisbane Olympic Games. Now, just before we get into the suburbs, I wanted to talk about the method to this madness, although there's a bit of madness here as well. Now, basically what I did is look at 50 years of history in Brisbane. And so between 1976 and 2016, the average house increased by 9.7% per annum. What I went and did after that by looking at the 400 suburbs was look for suburbs that in the last 10 years have underperformed relative to that longer term history. Now, what I know from Jeremy Shepard's data looking at Sydney for over 25 years is that suburbs that do worse at the start of a cycle often do much better and catch up in the second half of the cycle, which is often called the ripple effect or the domino effect. Now let's get stuck in. The first suburb is called Raceview. It's in the southwestern corridor of Brisbane, about 31 k's as the crow flies from the city. Now what I love about Raceview is that it's only done about 5.25% per annum on average over the last 10 years, where other suburbs in Brisbane over the same period of time did between 10 and 14%. You can buy houses in Raceview like three bedroom, one bathroom, unrenovated or partially renovated homes for under 500K, and you can get beautiful homes in great condition for between 550 and 600. The rent returns in that part of the city because house prices are cheap and rents have been rising, are really, really strong. Now we've been looking at these suburbs every year over the last eight years and I've never seen them hotter at the moment. There are so many first time buyers and families looking to move out there because it's so affordable with the average property getting somewhere between 10 and 60 groups through on an open home and somewhere between two and 10 offers in multiple offers on the weekend. That demand is going to create pressure on the market and it's going to drive prices up in a short period of time. Now, if we look at the second suburb, which is also in that southwestern corridor, just next to Ipswich, where according to the state government, we should have the first fast rail in Queensland's history by the 2032 Olympic Games, which will get people from the city out there to the city of Brisbane in 22 minutes. On top of that, the Queensland government and the Brisbane City Council have decided that Ipswich, which is about 30 k's from the city of Brisbane and actually part of the city of Brisbane, will grow from 190,000 people today to up to 400,000 people between now and the Olympic Games. And on top of that, it's got a great uni some absolute Australian best schools. And the Brisbane City Council and the state government has said that Ipswich, like Parramatta in Sydney, will become the second CBD of Brisbane. Now, what I love about this suburb of Brazil is it's only done 5.16% per annum in the last 10 to 12 years. The rental vacancy rates in this suburb are so low, sitting below 1% right now, meaning it's chronically, chronically undersupplied. Demographically speaking, the average household incomes are great with the average family earning between 60 plus thousand dollars per year, meaning that prices could creep up and rents could come up with that. And the DSR score, which is the demand to supply ratio score, currently sitting at 57 out of 100. So the closer you get to 100, the hotter it gets. As an investor, you really want to be targeting suburbs with a DSR between 55 and 70, which means there's massive pressure on the market but it hasn't resulted in short-term growth yet. Now, for those of you that want to get much closer to the city as well as closer to the Gold Coast for the lifestyle on the weekend, the third suburb is Bethania. Now, Bethania's average annual growth rate, which is about 27 Ks as the crow flies from the CBD, has only been 5.74% per annum in the last 12 years. In Bethania, you can get average and okay homes that require a little bit of work for about 550 k and really, really beautiful homes for between about 600 and 650K. Now, one of the things I like about this suburb is it's got a very high percentage of owner occupiers with over 70% of the people living there being first time, second home buyers and mums and dads with families. Another thing that I also like is it's a good size market. So in the last 12 months, there were almost 100 properties sold there, which means that if you ever need to sell your property, or get it revalued by the bank to release some equity to move forward with another investment, there's a good number of comparable sales, which the valuer and the bank can take into consideration to help you move forward with that property. Rent returns in this southern part of the city, which is Logan, have gone ballistic in the last 12 months. And according to CoreLogic, 
are expected to rise as much as another $100 per week by the end of 2024. Now, the last suburb, which I love the look of, is Logan Home, directly south of the city. It's about a 25 to 30 minute commute from that suburb to the CBD and about a 35 to 40 minute drive for a surf on the weekend of the Gold Coast. Now, the average house prices in this suburb are a little bit more expensive between the 600 and 700K mark, but the data suggests that's still significantly undervalued where it's only done around about 6% per annum over the last 10 to 12 years. Now, when I look back at previous real estate cycles where a cycle is about an 18-year event, from the last GFC to the next GFC, house prices in Brisbane for the last 60 years, when you break it into those chunks from major event to major event, have done about 127% on average. Now, that's why I love the look of these suburbs because from the last GFC, they've really only done about 60% of what historically has been more than 120% growth, meaning that there is some incredible growth on the table between now and the Olympic Games. Now, I just read an incredible article in the Australian Financial Review where seven different leading analysts, some of them from the major banks in Australia, looked at the suburbs and the parts of the city that I just mentioned to you and they're expecting the average house in these south and southwestern parts of Brisbane to go from about $600,000 this year to somewhere between 900 k and $1.1 to $1.2 million by the Olympic Games in nine years from today. Now, another thing that I love about Logan Home is the incomes are through the roof. So according to the latest census, you're looking at almost $90,000 per annum with incomes from census to census continuing to rise significantly. Like the last suburb of Bethania, there's also a very high percentage of owner-occupiers and a smaller percentage of renters with less than 30% of people living there renting. Now, the infrastructure in all four of these suburbs is incredible. You're surrounded by either Griffith University in the last two suburbs in South Brisbane or the University of Southern Queensland in Southwest Brisbane or Ipswich. You've got train lines running through many of these areas and incredible arterial roads in the M1, the M2, and the M6 taking you directly to the CBD or the Gold Coast for work. I think all four of these suburbs are in that pocket where the ripple has yet to fully hit them and they haven't fully realized their value, and all four of them represent incredible buying long-term. Now, for those of you who are seriously thinking about buying an investment in the next 12 months, I'd love to offer you a one-on-one strategy session where we can talk about where you are right now where you'd like to be longer term, you can pick our brain about the best suburbs in Brisbane from our experience of buying over $450 million worth of property in this market in the last eight years. And you can go and take that with a grain of salt and absolutely smash it on your own and get into the Brisbane market or potentially become one of the extremely small number of clients that we take on as buyers agents in Brisbane each month. I wish you all the best on your journey into the Brisbane market and hope you find an absolute cracker. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Getting Have a spin. Bro. Yeah. Oh, sweaty. So sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.